a few years back, I'm having drinks with my buddy Sylvan after work. We're belly aching, beer blasting, and belching. And saying, you know, maybe the best years are behind us. We don't seem to have any adventure anymore. So we start sharing ideas, and next thing you know, we're going south of the border. <laughs> he spoke Spanish as a second language, and I knew how to plan for travel, and all I needed was a firm commitment and 40,000 of his frequent flyer miles. <laughs> so off to Costa Rica for an eco-friendly trip to see the rainforest. It was an Indiana Jones bucket list adventure. 13 hours flying, we land, I'm a little jet lagged, a little foggy headed, I rent an SUV, we're driving out of town, it's a narrow two lane road, trucks and cars are whizzing past me, and I see a set of red flashing lights coming up behind me. And I thought, that patrol car must be going after those trucks that just passed me. I'll just speed up and uh, get to a place in the road where it's wide enough and let him pass. Well, 10 minutes later, <laughs> the road hasn't gotten any wider and I start to realize we're in chase mode. <laughs> so I stop and out of the car comes a trooper looking like something just like Smokey and the Bandit. He flings off those aviator sunglasses and the Spanish is whizzing by me like white lightning. <laughs> You're in a lot of trouble, my buddy tells me. And I replied, if anything happens, go to the American Embassy. I saw it in a movie. <laughs> so I don't know what to say. I don't remember anything about traffic tickets in South America. So I say, well, hello. No comprende espanolo. I wanted to demonstrate that I was stupid as my best line of defense to get out of this ticket. So back and forth, I'm pretty sure that I damaged uh, U.S. Latin America relations since the time of Ronald Reagan. And the next thing you know it, I'm starting to tense up. I've never gotten a ticket before, so I'm thinking maybe this is pay-as-you-go on demand. So, Quanto, I open up my wallet and I hand the first thing that comes out, which is a $20 bill. Well, now Smokey's really mad. He thinks I'm trying to bribe him. And clearly it wasn't enough to narrow. So, he takes my passport and tells us that we have to go to the next town to get it back and pay for the ticket. We're driving off and my buddy looks over and he said, that's the most fun I've had in a while, I'll pay for the ticket. So we drive another eight hours on the Pan American Highway, which at the time was nothing more than a dirt road cutting through the jungle, and I managed to hit every axle-splitting pothole along the way at top speed of 40 miles an hour. We finally arrive at the hotel, we check in, going past the wood deck, go to the hotel room, and there's one lonely ceiling fan spinning. It's 90 degrees, a thousand percent humidity. Next thing you know, an iguana comes swimming by our feet. And the clerk tells us, keep your windows closed at night because what doesn't sting or bite you during the day will kill you at night. It's a bit like Jurassic Park here. So the next morning, we're like pumped, adrenaline's flowing, pulsating through our veins. We want adventure. We're not here for Disneyland. We want to go for something that's off the beaten path. So we're explaining to the clerk and he puts down the phone slowly, reaches over, picks up a two-way radio, and radios in, Jose, I have two live ones here for you. They're Americans. Now I'm starting to feel like babe. Nevertheless, Jose comes, we go two hours deep into the jungle, we get out of the truck, we start going up a, a river pathway, riverbed, and it's covered with tree canopies, and Jose is up there hitting with a machete, cutting a path, and this huge snake kind of drops down through the trees, and then it starts to rain. Rain, rainforest, yeah, it seems to add up, but why are we in the riverbed? Wouldn't this be a little dangerous? Now that it's raining, a wall of water could come up. So, Jose, grabs a vine, and up he goes, a rock embankment, 30 feet, straight up. I follow, get to the top, and I realize, where's my buddy? I look over, 
he's still down at the bottom struggling to get up. And it's starting to rain harder, the mud's slippery, and I'm not sure those vines are all that strong. So I reach over, and I can't quite reach him. And so I figure, best thing I can do is coach. Come on, keep going, you're almost there. <laughs> we finally get to a point where we can reach over and pull him up. He's got fear in his face. He stands up, and then I see that fear kind of go to anger. I ought to knock you into next year for bringing me out here. What were you thinking? If you had half a brain, he continues, and I'm wincing, yeah, but it's adventure, adventure. So for the next two hours, we manage to get back to the truck, and we go on this amazing trek. We see waterfalls, lush hillsides, flowering trees, uh, exotic birds that make those guy sounds, you know? <laughs> Everything that I promised to deliver, we saw. We get back to the hotel, and we're covered in head-to-toe red clay dirt. We look like we had just dug the Panama Canal. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to have a hot shower right now? Oh, but uh, the water's just been turned off due to maintenance. So off to the hotel bar we go, because it's 5 o'clock somewhere, and we needed perspective. <laughs> so we had a few drinks, shared some good laughs. We even got upgraded that night to an air-conditioned room. <laughs> you guys have air conditioning here? Why didn't you tell us? Oh, uh, no Disneyland is what we heard. Hmm. Good idea. So years later, we're still laughing about this. In fact, he even got a pretty good laugh when a couple days ago when I told him I was going to talk about this today. You see, adventure is really timeless. And laughter makes for some very good friendship. Thank you.